Today, we will talk about the Attitude and Heading Reference System. Which, like the Air Data Computer, has helped the transition from the conventional analog instruments to the new digital systems. However, before going into detail with this system, we must see how conventional analog instruments work. In the case of gyroscopic instruments, each one has its own gyroscope specifically designed to measure a certain parameter. This means that each instrument has its own gyro, gimbals, gears, and other moving parts. This results in more complex isolated systems, with errors and inaccuracies due to mechanical imperfections, friction, gyroscopic drift, among others. And in addition to this, in the case of the heading indicator, the crew must manually correct the indication using the magnetic compass as a reference. And to do so, the aircraft must be flying in straight flight with a constant speed, as these are the only conditions under which the compass gives a correct heading indication. All this results in higher workloads and lower accuracy. As we have seen, these conventional gyroscopic instruments tend to have low accuracy and several disadvantages. So in order to improve the accuracy and functionalities of the system, the Attitude and Heading Reference System was developed, which is abbreviated as AHARS. This unit has gyroscopes, accelerometers, and magnetometers oriented in the three axes. These sensors calculate the aircraft attitude and heading accurately in real time, based on the measurement of the movements of pitch, bank, and yaw. Then the information is sent electronically to the relevant instruments and systems. Now, since the resulting parameters are generated electronically, these are easily integrated with different types of instruments. For example, the electronic data generated by the unit can be used to feed analog instruments that are adapted to receive electronic inputs. Or they can also be sent to electronic flight instrument systems with digital presentations. The instruments normally fed by the AHARs are the attitude indicator, the heading indicator, the turn and slip indicator, and the turn coordinator. And apart from this, the system can also feed instruments that previously used a remote indicating compass, such as the HSI or the RMI. Here we see the instruments in their conventional analog presentation. However, normally this unit is used in conjunction with digital instruments as we can see here. Here we can see the attitude indicator, the slip and skit indicator, the HSI, and the RMI. And although the main purpose of the AHARS is to feed the flight instruments, the information can also be sent to other systems that require it. Such as the autopilot and flight director system, the yaw damper, the weather radar, the monitoring and warning system, the flight management system, the flight data recorder, and the ACARS. Now that we have seen the instruments and systems that use the information generated by the AHARS, let us now look at its sensors. The AHARS has a series of sensors contained within an inertial measurement unit, abbreviated as IMU. This unit is responsible for measuring changes in the aircraft's attitude and heading, and then sending this raw information to a Kalman filter and a processor to integrate and process it. After this, the electronic data is sent to the flight instruments and systems. Now, this was a basic overview of how the IMU works. Let us now take a closer look at how the IMU detects changes in attitude and heading. Normally, this unit has three accelerometers, three gyroscopes, and three magnetometers oriented on the three axes. These axes are known as X, Y, and Z respectively for the movements of roll, pitch, and yaw. This means that there is one accelerometer for each axis, which allows to calculate the accelerometer's derived attitude. The same happens with the gyroscopes, there is one for each axis, which allows to calculate the gyro-derived attitude. And finally, there is also one magnetometer for each axis, which allows to calculate the magnetometer's derived heading. With this in mind, and taking into account the capabilities of each type of sensor, we would obtain the following data. The accelerometers are capable of measuring the attitude of the aircraft in terms of pitch and bank. The gyros are capable of measuring the pitch, bank, and heading. And the magnetometers are capable of measuring only the magnetic heading. All this information derived from the sensors is sent to a Kalman filter, which integrates and complements this information 
in order to obtain a sensor fusion. This sensor fusion improves the integrity and accuracy of information to then calculate the estimated pitch, bank, and heading values. Now, it is important to mention that each IMU is different since each unit is designed depending on needs, applications, and budget. Therefore, there are different technologies used in inertial sensors. For example, laser and fiber optic sensors are normally used in advanced inertial reference systems. While on the other hand, microelectromechanic sensors are widely used in attitude and heading reference systems, and therefore in this video we will focus on this type of sensors. A microelectromechanic system, abbreviated as MEMS, is a compact, relatively simple, inexpensive, an accurate system used to measure the attitude and heading. That is why they are easily incorporated into wireless and mobile devices, for example to provide the compass or inclinometer functions of some smartphones. With this in mind, let's now see how each of the sensors of a MEMS system works. Starting with the accelerometers. A MEMS accelerometer consists of a mass attached to calibrated springs that moves back and forth depending on the acceleration it experiences. This way, the displacement of the mass can be measured and interpreted as a measure of acceleration. The information from the accelerometers is vital for example for the initial alignment of the system since they can detect the direction of gravity and use it as a reference to establish the position of the horizon. Apart from this, accelerometers are also useful for measuring changes in the attitude of the aircraft in terms of pitch and bank. Now, a MEMS gyroscope consists of a mass attached to calibrated springs that constantly moves back and forth. This way, when a rotation around the measured axis occurs, the mass is displaced to a side due to the Coriolis force. This displacement of the mass can be measured and the angular rate can be determined, just like when the precession is measured in a conventional gyroscope. In essence then, a MEMS gyro is not a actually a real gyro. Since instead of measuring rotation on an axis using the gyroscopic principles, the MEMS system calculates it based on the resultant forces when a rotation occurs. However, it is called a gyro because the information it provides is basically the same. Finally, a MEMS magnetometer consists of a plate with high electrical conductivity attached to a direct current circuit. In this case, the Earth's magnetic field will influence the behavior of the electrons as they flow through the plate. This way, if the voltage between two point in the plate is measured, the resulting value will depend on the strength and direction of the magnetic field, thus allowing to measure it in the three axes. However, in aviation we have a big problem with this type of magnetometers, since they are affected by electromagnetic interferences from the avionics or the engines. So, to solve this, instead of using the magnetometers of the IMU, the AHARs can receive information from a remote flux valve, which we have already discussed in detail in the video about the remote indicating compass. And just like in a remote indicating compass, some AHARs incorporate a free mode that allows the magnetometers to be disconnected from the system in areas where magnetic heading information is unreliable, as for example near the magnetic poles. In this case then, the heading information will only be provided by the MEMS gyros, not the magnetometers. Now, since we have seen how the sensors of a MEMS system work, we must say that the Kalman filter allows for error compensation, since by using the joint data derived from the accelerometers, gyroscopes, and magnetometers in all three axes, errors due to gyroscopic drift and other imperfections can be almost completely eliminated. This substantially increases the accuracy of information and reduces crew workloads, since it is not necessary to perform manual corrections. Now, in order for the AHARS sensors to function properly, an initial alignment is required. The purpose of this initial alignment is to determine the attitude of the aircraft when it is on the ground, since changes in attitude will be measured in relation to the attitude detected during this initial alignment. This process normally takes a few seconds. However, it can take up to a couple of minutes depending on the manufacturer of the AHARS system. An important consideration during this initial alignment is that the aircraft must remain stationary on a level surface so that the initial reference attitude is as accurate as possible. 
Now, this alignment is required only upon power-up. However, if there is a problem with the unit during flight, a realignment may be required. In this case, the aircraft must remain in straight and level flight at constant speed and follow the instructions of the manufacturer for the realignment. Now, in the event of a total failure of the AHARS, an alert will be displayed on the affected instruments as we can see here. In this situation, in aircraft equipped with a single AHARS computer, the crew must use the standby analog instruments. These standby instruments use conventional mechanical gyroscopes independent of the AHARS sensors, so they are not affected by the failure of the unit. Now, talking about the system layout, smaller aircraft with simple systems usually have only one AHARS computer. In this case, the IMU sensors send the raw data to the Kalman filter and processor of the AHARS, and then the unit sends the processed electronic data to the relevant instruments. And separately the standby instruments are driven by mechanical gyroscopes. Now, in aircraft with two sets of instruments, two AHARs are normally installed, each fed by its own IMU with dedicated sensors. This means that there are two AHARs, one for the captain's instruments and another for the first officer's instruments. And apart from this, there are also the standby instruments driven by mechanical gyros. And as with the air data computers, when there is more than one AHARS unit installed, although each one is independent, they are interconnected, so that the information calculated by each unit can be compared to detect failures or inaccuracies of the sensors. And in addition to this, there is also the possibility to select the AHARs that feed a certain group of instruments. For example, if here we have this configuration and the AHARs number 2 fails, then the crew can select the AHARs number 1 to also feed the first officer's instruments so they can work properly. Now, as with the Air Data computer, in more complex and modern aircraft, the AHARS is integrated with other computers and units to complement the information and calculate other useful parameters. For example, it can be integrated with an air data computer, obtaining the air data, attitude and heading reference system. This new unit allows increasing the accuracy of attitude information, gives a more stable vertical speed indication, and compacts two units into one. It is also common to find this unit integrated with a global navigation satellite system, which allows to calculate other parameters such as wind direction and speed, the ground speed, the wind correction angle, and the magnetic track. An example of the use of this type of unit is the Garmin G1000, which, although it does not use the units combined, it does use the information derived from each one to calculate all the parameters. Finally, with the advent of smaller and cheaper MEMS sensors, portable AHARS units that transmit information wirelessly through Wi-Fi or Bluetooth became available in the market. These can be used to provide accurate data to mobile navigation applications, such as For Flight or Air Navigation Pro. And although smartphones and tablets already incorporate MEMS sensors, their accuracy and reliability is much lower compared to the portable AHARS units. I hope the information presented in this video was useful, if so, don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.